You're listening to Brighton Nights with me, Boogaloo Stew, here on Brighton's Juice 107.2, online at juicebrighton.com, and now on DAB Digital Radio. And with me now on the telephone, my next guest, I'm really excited to welcome Jim Kerr from The Simple Minds. Hello, Stu. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. I wanted to talk to you first about your back catalogue. Mm -hmm. Your music seems to instill a real passion in people. Everyone I know has a Simple Mind song that they really love. And I think I was about 12 when I heard my first Simple Mind song, which was I Travel. And it made such a huge impression on me. When you were writing and recording back then, were you aware that you were creating something that was groundbreaking? No, I, I, I mean, well, first of all, I want to say thanks for that. Thanks for the, for the compliment. But um, I don't think we would, I don't think with that kind of confidence, we, we were we hoped we were of our time we hoped we were at least of the moment but we had been influenced by a lot of groundbreaking things uh, the work that David Bowie had done particularly then in Eno and craft work and you know synthesizers were, were were just getting to that stage where they were affordable and so therefore up until then you know synthesizers were the size of a huge fridge and you needed two scientists to op operate them it seemed like that way or, or but just around then synthesizers became much more compact and and almost as affordable as a guitar and an amp and and perhaps we were groundbreaking in the sense that um, just as kids were able to get their hands I mean I say kids we were about 20 just as kids were able to get get their hands on on synthesizers we we were there and along with some others we we you know we started to come up with those sounds that um, that were really exciting us well, I suppose back then you were part of a, a really exciting wave of Scottish pop that made the charts, like bands like Orange Juice, Altered Images, The Associates. Looking back, was it a really special time in Scotland, do you think? Well, funny enough, I mean, you're, again, you're, you're right about that, but we were, we were, back then, we were about six months a year in advance, which doesn't sound like anything now, but, but it was, it was a hell of a, time then so we were by that time we had a deal which meant we were out on tour and um, we would come back our friends would say oh, you got to hear this band uh, i remember my my girlfriend sent to me uh this band the associates they're the best thing ever um and i thought how can they best be the best thing ever they haven't even only played two gigs um she said no this she was talking about the potential i guess or the the impact but anyway we would almost come every time we'd go on tour we would come back and a new thing had popped up so you're you're right then that that was where glasgow was, well actually although associates were from dundee that's when that's when scotland really started to believe in itself and 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 has continued to do so ever since yeah yeah, absolutely. And you were very prolific then. You mentioned you were touring a lot then. Yeah. But you also, you released an album almost every year up until... We did, yeah, which, which really astounds me. Um, I think what it is is, you know, people say that you've got all your life to write your first few albums because you, you know, you have this abundance, maybe you've been writing since you're 13, 14, and you've got this abundance of ideas. But the truth of the matter is the guys I worked with, the guys that were in the band, the guys that allowed me to sing with them were not only prolific, they were all writers. It wasn't like, you know, there was a, an axis of two writers then. You know, the keyboard player was writing, the bass player was writing, the drummer had, had ideas. So um, um, it was, you know, it was pouring out of us. And, and and while we were on tour, we would try things out at sound checks, or we would slip in a, a half baked idea. Maybe the song wasn't complete, but we felt the vibe of it would be strong enough to 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 engage an audience. And and indeed, that's how a lot of that stuff was was kind of honed and developed. And from your early chart successes, they they were kind of modest in comparison to the huge hits you had yes. later in, in the eighties. Don't You Forget About Me, featured in the Breakfast Club soundtrack and yeah. was a huge hit. Yeah. How did the opportunity to perform on that soundtrack arise? Well, it really came through the, the film director, John, John Hughes, who, I mean, it, it, 
it's amazing when you when you think of the, those movies, and he he did a few of them, Pretty in Pink, and and some others, and they were basically all teenage American movies. However, John himself was a huge fan of of the, the sort of ground bacon stuff that was come out of the the UK. He rarely used American music uh, um, in his movies. It was all it was you know, Simple Minds, The Psychedelic Fours. I think The Cure featured. Um, OMD. Um, John was John was a let's say an Anglophile, yeah. <laughs> um, um, and and it was his uh, unwaning desire to, to to have you know bands like ourselves feature. And by the late eighties, you were selling out massive stadium tours off off the back of that success. Mm. What was your most memorable gig from that time? You know, there's a temptation. People, there's, I, I can tell you the iconic gigs. They're rather obvious. Live Aid, and the first thing you play in Wembley Stadium, and Mandela concerts, and 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 all those, all those big gigs that are now part of sort of <clears throat> rock and roll folklore. Um, however, I don't know if they were so enjoyable, to, really, because there was so much pressure. Um, I mean, there were. They were hugely exciting, but there was so much pressure attached to them. You know, they were like cup finals in a way, and you had 15 minutes to get on and, and hit the ground running and make your impact and get off. And and it was being, I mean, Live Aid had the biggest, uh, it was a record-breaking global audience. And, and you know, I, I'm looking at pictures of us from then, you know, it might seem that we're very casual about it all, but... You know, we were breaking it inside. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, so, uh, you know, for me, the more pleasurable gigs might have been those, you know, it could have been Nottingham, it could have been, it could have been in Inverness, it could have been on the outskirts of Berlin or Amsterdam where the only pressure, well, I say this all the time, <laughs> we have pressure every night, the only pressure we have is to be great yeah. because that's what an audience demands but um, I, you know they were all we wanted to do when we started this band was play music live and take it around the world and, and each and every one of the gigs were, were part of that Okay Jim if you'll stay with us on the phone we'll have some music from Simple Minds now one of my personal favourites this is I Travel that is the Simple Minds with I Travel here on Brighton's Juice 107.2 and I'm talking to Jim Kerr from Simple Minds on the telephone right now Jim the Simple Minds have released 16 studio albums, but more recently you launched a solo project, uh, Lost Boy AKA. Is there another solo album from you in the pipeline? I That's hope so. I mean, uh, when I say I, I, I hope so, what I mean is it's something that's parked until uh, perhaps Simple Minds are not as active. That's when that's when um, there's a space to do that stuff. Um, Simple Minds have been incredibly active um, um, the last, particularly the last five, six years and um, I foresee that going on for uh, a few years yet, I mean I, I know for a fact we already have engagements planned, uh, booked for the next few few years but um, but um, I would dearly like to, to pick up the reins with Lost Boy as soon as there is an opportunity. And your latest album, Big Music, that came out last year, it sounds like a return to your early sound. Is this something you purposely set out to do? It's funny, we, 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 we even after all these years, after all this time, we, we, we make these vague plans. Um, for, for or rather we make these vague creative plans where we say we'd like to do this, we'd like to do let's do this, but somehow it's still something organic where you hang, oh hang on the project's gone a different way and I don't remember us sitting down with uh, big music and saying right let's go back i tell you why because you kind of can't go back, you know, well, that was then, that was you, you were 18, you were 19, it was a different world, technology has changed, you can't really go back, but um, what happened is, a few years ago we did a tour called Five from Five, where we played um, five songs from each of our fa first five albums, it was essentially like a, a no-hits tour, because it was before all those albums were pretty much before Simple Minds had any major success. But anyway, uh, not only was it received very well, but the thing that surprised us 
going back to 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 those songs and to conjure up those sounds again was that um, it, they didn't really feel nostalgic. They felt very much of the moment, and you could say, well, how how can that be? And I think what it is that over the last few years, a lot of new artists have been plugging into that genre of music that we came from and the way they have sort of re-contemporized it. And so what we have found is that big, big music very much sounds of the moment, but, but of course evokes the past as well. It's almost like a loop going round and, uh, and it feels a nice place to be. I think for me listening to it, it sounds like it's brimming with ideas and, and creativity. More yes. than looking back, it just sounds like it's that, that you're being incredibly creative. It's potent, yes, you're right. It, it has, I mean, that, it has a, let's be honest, it shouldn't feel like that at this, this stage of the game. <laughs> but it does, you know, it feels like we're there, we're, you're really wanting to prove, uh, I think the quality of the songs are very, very good. And um, and 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 likewise, a, a great mixture of the the sounds of of not retro, but definitely calling up those ghosts. So, with the new album and with such a, a huge back catalogue to choose from, the Hickstead show is on the twelfth of September. What will you be playing at at Hickstead? Well, we want to. I mean, I could say it. it, it we have to distill because it's. I don't know how long we're playing it. Like said, but being a festival, it's you know by the very nature of that means it would be a shorter set than we would do in our own uh, gigs. But nevertheless, um, we'll want to put together a set where where those that are coming to hear the big songs won't be disappointed. Um, those hardcore people that, that like to hear a song that you haven't played for years, well, we like to have a few surprises and. Um, the fact that uh, big music has gone across so well, we'll, we'll definitely touch on that as well. So, so there's hopefully there'll be a great um, mixture that'll that'll have a nice balance and and um, make everyone happy. Fantastic. Okay. So, what lies beyond the Hickstead show? Have you have you got any tour dates that you can tell us about coming up later in the year? Well, indeed, we we do. We 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 have um, tickets out on sale um, for the the arena tour that we do in uh, the UK arena and Europe as well. That uh, begins about middle of November. Um, so we have that, and in between, uh, Hickstead is the last gig until then, and in between we will be um, making the first moves of, of what will be the, the next album. Well, good luck with it all, Jim. Thanks so much for, Thank you, for taking the time to talk to us. It's all really righty. Pleasure. Yeah.